So I'm going to show you the number one reason an entrepreneur should never go back to a nine to five job. And get this, Rob kind of disagrees. <laughs> this business podcast, the two business guys mastermind uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup operational and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. <laughs> so Rob, what, what's happening? Why should an entrepreneur not go back to a nine to five job? But I think like, like Randy said, I kind of disagree. And I, the reason I say I kind of disagree is, and we've talked about this a little bit before, right? Going back to a nine to five job means you left the job because your business was doing well enough or you left the job because your dreams were so big, right? And now you're going back. And that's where I agree. You shouldn't go back to a nine to five job, but you always have to be aware when you're on this entrepreneurial journey of is the vehicle that you're in capable of getting you the dream that you want, mm. right? Are you able to actually get from here to there doing what you're doing. For some of us, right? Yes, we have a business. Yes, that business may be making some money, but it may not be making the light, the type of money that you want it to make. And no matter how much you maximize that business, it may just not be capable of doing it, right? Randy and I talk a lot of times about, you know, um, cake and, and B businesses, right? Like businesses that they have a low ceiling. They, they have low barrier to entry and you can make decent money Right. Like if you if you if you remember back when we was in school, there was always that kid that had candy. Right. You go to Sam's Club or you go to Costco, you got candy in your backpack. You can sell candy. You can make. You know, twenty dollars, thirty dollars a day, but you were generally tapped out. You wasn't going to make a bunch more money a day unless you had other people selling for you, unless you had other people working with you, other things that you were doing. And even then. You couldn't expand even past that unless you went to other schools, right? The, the vehicle of I'm just going to sell and I'm just going to work harder. You wasn't going to, you was going to make maybe a hundred dollars, hundred fifty dollars a day at most. And that's if you're not doing no schoolwork and not paying attention to nothing. You're just selling candy all day. Yeah. It's important for us to realize, does the vehicle have the ability to get us there, right? A car can't get me to London, no matter how amazing of a car it is. Is that accurate? A car can't get me there? I mean, I may have to take a ferry. Exactly. I may Which have means to. That the car so you're saying there. straight there, the car is going to need some help. So, okay, here's why I see it. Mm -hmm. um, there are so many different things that happen once you become an entrepreneur. There is a, a level of BS detector. That comes across that that you develop as an entrepreneur because you had to go out there and eat from which the thing you unlived the thing you <laughs> right you can't say that too loud but it, because you had to go out there and do a thing and then eat from mm -hmm. that now mm -hmm. that is one of the things now i'm going to show you the number one reason here coming up but hey look look what we're talking about if you like some of this stuff we're going to ask that you subscribe to the channel you know and put some comments if you believe what we're talking about or if you totally 100 disagree throw those in the comments uh and mm -hmm. hit your notification to your bell notification so you know when we drop in these this, this next video but here's the here's the thing you become a different person Right. You become you develop a different skill set that most nine to five jobs do not possess. Now, Rob has an addendum to that as the lawyer. He he is has, uh, you know, practiced. There's an right. addendum. caveats. Yeah. Caveat. Right. Do you consider a 1099 position 1099 y'all as a non job? Now, 1099 says that, you know, you don't really work for the company. You work for yourself. You're 1099. You're not W-2. Right. But have we seen situations where it's like, this is like a job. I think that it definitely depends on the 1099. But if you think about it, right, as an entrepreneur, 
every client that you have 1099 you. Right. Yes. If they pay you more than six hundred dollars a year, they right. 1099 you. So the question is, 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 is really what is the contract that you're taking on? Right. Because you're a business unto yourself or your business is a business unto itself. The question always is, what's the contract that you're taking on? And this goes back to that vehicle question. Is the vehicle that you have sufficient to get you where you need to go? Right. Like I've seen a lot of entrepreneurs who are in um, different fields and they're doing things where, for example, I remember uh, I had a friend who he was working. At on a contract with a client. But the client needed him to do more days on that contract. Now, he's he's facilitating one company, but they're needing more and more and more of his time. But more and more and more of his time doesn't allow him to go and expand his business and get more clients. Now, it pays him really decent money. Right. He was making over six figures with this one client doing a couple of days a week. The question becomes, if I do more days with this one client. What happens to my business? Mm -hmm. And does it pay me enough to transfer those funds to somebody else to do the work that I'm not doing because I'm over there? Those are the types of things, right? That I remember even for me when I started my nonprofit, and this was the epiphany that I had. I remember I started my nonprofit, and the whole reason, the whole way I started, I was like, I am running a business. I don't have time to run a nonprofit. So the only way this is going to get off the ground is if we build a team to run it who does all of the work. And I'm kind of the, the the visionary. I come in and we talk and to make sure everybody understands what we're trying to get done. They go do. I come back and that's how it works. Now, we've been able to, with that work, do a whole bunch of stuff. We've helped over 50 people get different services. We've got grants. We've got all types of things. I might spend 10 hours a month working on my nonprofit. But my not the, the team is doing amazing work. That happened because I realized that I needed people to be able to do this work. I couldn't be the person doing it. But a lot of people are the person doing that work in their business, right? That's where we get back to. You only got so many hours in a day. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to stand on a milk crate, basically, <laughs> and 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 shout from uh, the rafters that you shouldn't even approach the 95 simply because now and then when the entrepreneur having experienced it personally i'm not mm -hmm. just talking out you know out of my shoe <laughs> having ex experience going back into a work environment after been having been nine to five um or entrepreneurial and mm -hmm. the transition and the anxiety and the feelings that come over you and then the meetings that you have to sit there and you're going we are not eating in this meeting <laughs> It just became so off-putting to me mm -hmm. and soul-sucking. And mm -hmm. it became so much that you wanted to do. I remember once in a in a one-on-one -on -one meeting with my supervisor. Now I got a supervisor and the whole thing back, right? Um, mm -hmm. And <laughs> they said to me, she said this to me. She says, look, you're always consulting and stop that and i'm going well i i'm i'm a consultant this is kind of what i do but guess what not anymore because you work for us kind of a thing right and i mm -hmm. remember this and, and i think i mentioned this in one of our other videos once that i just about got fired up out of that place like like 30 days and it was like you're out of here which would have probably you know been doing me a favor but Here's the part that happens, y'all, and I'm not going to reveal the number one reason why you shouldn't, but this is a part of <laughs> a part of it. I, I needed that job. Right. Uh, That's there it. was something in and there was there was this other part of me, the safety part of me. Yeah. That said, yeah. I need the security of whatever. Seeing this check Just on Fridays. So speak on that, because I think that's a, that's something that's so often I've seen a whole bunch of the different videos. You just got to grind. You just got to believe. You just got to. Here's the reality. Cash flow is a real consideration, yes. especially if you're not 25 and single. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 25 and single. You can couch hop it. You can sleep in your car. You can do whatever you need to do for a couple months. You can grind a lot different than if you have a house, a mortgage, kids, yeah. wife, 
all the that things, box. right? Or husband or, or, you know, responsibilities, parents to take care of, siblings, cousins, whatever. So talk a little bit about, right? I get the, I get the, the feeling of we can't go back to the nine to five, but what if the nine to five is the cash flow that you need? What, what, what then? It's like one of those moments where it's like, okay, what then? Then there's information that's telling you that the business that you've chose is not going to work. It's not working, mm -hmm. whatever it is, mm -hmm. because it mm -hmm. can't feed you to a particular level. And or um, like uh, the profit first guy says is, is that you haven't structured it properly. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, here's where that begins to start destabilizing and crumbling the foundation. Mm -hmm. It's that desire, those things informing you. That mm -hmm. then starts to begin to, you know, destabilize and crumble the foundation of freedom, of doing things the way I want to, of you know, rising when I want to, working as late as I want to, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when you go back from having been entrepreneur, when you go back to the 95, having been entrepreneurial, you're carrying all that, right? And it's bringing up a, a just a stank. You're looking over there at the bosses like, you know, you guys, you all are trapping me again. And you start developing some unusual <laughs> feelings around that. You're like, yes, right. Yeah. But there is a reality. So now you have to face the fact that mm -hmm. you you basically didn't make it. Couldn't make it. Chose the wrong wall. Put your now you've heard these put your lad up. Against and the see, wrong that's wall, the, that, and you that's the face thing that that's why I want to push back, though, because I think that that's the. Here's something that happened to me. And I remember when I was first starting my entrepreneur, my, my, my full-time entrepreneurial journey, I remember the, all those feelings, especially the first couple months and everything. This is maybe year two uh -huh. into this journey. And I had gone through not making money and being nearly bankrupt and all types of different things going on. And I remember I had all that weight on my shoulders and until I had a coach that was an entrepreneur, had done it, had done seven figures, had done all the rest of that, and reminded me, hey, wait a minute, calm down. Your story isn't unusual. As a matter of fact, 80% of millionaires have been bankrupt or nearly bankrupt at some point in time in their life. Yeah, yeah. And I think so often entrepreneurs, we get into this because we, right, you go from the working world. Who do we think millionaires are? We think millionaires are the golden children. They're the silver spoon children or they're the, 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 the dynamic touched by God, have worked and done everything right and moved and gritted and hustled and grinded mm -hmm. to this space. And they've never made any mistakes. That's the narrative. That's the story until you actually success. read their stories. And when you read their stories, you hear about things like Damon John, who went out and went and tried to do his first deal and actually messed it all up. So then he had to get a ride share company and he was doing a ride share company. And that's how he started making money. And then he got back into fashion and then FUBU happened. Right. But you you, you hear all of these different types of stories. You hear Russell Simmons, who was had, had loaned, borrowed some money from the wrong people and done a whole bunch of different things and then wound up finding run DSC and rap and, and, and right. And, and this was his brother that he finally got into the game and the beastie boys and all the rest of that. And then creating Def Jam. You hear about all these stories of people failing at business one time, two times, three times, and then figuring it out. And that's who the millionaires are. Mm -hmm. It's not the people. Right. And even when you listen to the stories like Michael Dell, everybody thinks, oh, he was the college whiz kid. And he was, he had been running businesses since he was in high school. So and some of them have been successful. He had reps. Exactly. He had reps. He had time in. And that's what most people don't hear. I love Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, because it kind of it pulled the veil back on a lot of this stuff. A lot of this stuff that seems like, you know, hand of God. These are just the chosen one people. Right. There are some of those. Right. Like LeBron James is an anomaly. Right. He's he's weird. Right. Michael Jordan, weird. Just just completely not out of out of out of you know, ordinary, all the rest of that. They just had freakish talent, all the rest of those things. But you look at the majority of people in the NBA or the majority of the people in Major League Baseball or the majority of people in the National Hockey League, one of the things that they showed was it's amazing. They all have birthdays around the same time. And yeah. those birthdays are in the optimal window 
when it's time for to be maturity. born for your sports yeah, yeah, season, yeah, yeah. for maturity, for uh, for, yeah. for 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 puberty to hit, for all the so they're they're the biggest, strongest, fastest kids in their grade right. every right. year, they're and so they get more the training, yeah. right? They get more training, they get more, uh, they get more opportunities. Now, why do I why do I talk about all that? Because we've got to break this narrative. I think that many entrepreneurs go through, and this is why I, this is where the I kind of disagree with the going back to the nine to five thing comes in. You can't think that if you need to take care of your family, if you need money, if you need security, if you need any of those things, that that's a failure. But you've got to recognize, and Maya Angelou says it like this, give yourself grace for what you didn't know when you didn't know it. If that's what you need right now, do what you need until you know better and then do better. Okay. All right. And let me take a different approach. All Let right. me say you get your education fast yeah. from said failures. Now, listen. I can see the dark side to that, right? Mm -hmm. I've experienced the dark side to that. And that is mm -hmm. you chase so many things. Yeah. Until, and this is something that it literally, I, I find myself coming to realize that that many at bats having seen that, and here's the, the, the analogy, y'all, having seen that many pictures Mm -hmm. has informed me i was exactly. literally listening to somebody and i was able to deduce the business model before they got done with the presentation and the more mm -hmm. of course at that moment you leave so now on one hand you've got discernment mm -hmm. you can quickly see the business model very rarely mm -hmm. am i looking at something and i don't get the business model i'm like what how they, how they gonna whatever right and it's because I says, I'm not going to go with the safety going from, you know, once I, you know, I'll disabuse myself of this idea that you, you know, you need to have a nine to five. Now, don't get me wrong, y'all. If you saw the whole bio, then you says, well, yeah, he worked a couple of, he saved for like two years, put enough money in the bank. So I did these things. <laughs> I reduced my burn mm -hmm. rate to almost zero, blah, yeah. blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. These mitigation mm -hmm. moments mm -hmm. so that I could do this. Right. Yeah. But that's one approach. But then at the same time, I thought, man, what if I had just I and I, it, it, it haunts me sometimes if I had just got out of school and went entrepreneur right away that I didn't mm -hmm. go and spend six, seven years in college. Right. I'm literally uh, I got a friend of mine who whose uh, son just got out of school. And she says, hey, he's taking this internship. And this internship is, is involves him. And I don't want to get too specific because I don't want to tell her business, but her, this internship involves him like having to take this big old test. And he's mm -hmm. got to study for the test. And then there's no guarantee he's going to pass the test, but he's got to study for it. Mm -hmm. So I says, mm -hmm. remind him. And he went through school for business. I says, remind him of this term. And that is the economic turn opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. I says, now, she doesn't want to tell him, look, mm -hmm. maybe you shouldn't do this, right? Because right. it's going to be a waste of time. And you understand very quickly what the game is of the company. They want another little person, right? He needed the hours to finish school because he's he's got to do this to get his paper, the internship, right? So I say, hmm, imagine this. He's doing something he loves. He's getting the hours he loves. He's getting the reps in. He's got to go over here. He hates all the studying he's got to do because he just got out of school, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I'm like, man, and they're trying to groom him to work for them, period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm like, hey, look, tell him, tell him I said, because she can't, because, you know, mom, you know, mom, parent, whatever. And I said, you tell him I said, don't do it. And, and, and get and out see, and start making his way entrepreneurially. That's all the I'm biggest saying. thing here's the here's the thing that I'll say though, and because I, in principle, in theory, I'm an entrepreneur. You're not like we. I agree with you, obviously, but I think sometimes we look at our past through rose colored glasses or through regret colored glasses, mm -hmm. not understanding that the fact that you have the ability to regret now is because you learned what you learned doing what you were doing then. 
And hindsight is always 2020. It's easy for us to armchair quarterback and be like, oh, I should have done, I should have done this. I should have done that. The problem is I love that. when you were looking at it, you couldn't see that. Correct. Correct. Right. And right. there's a reason that you can't see it. And oftentimes it's because there's a lesson that you have to learn before you can see that thing. Yes. And so I, I think a lot you of times get, get your lessons. That's it. And, and, and one of the lessons, and I think this is something for you to pay attention to when I was just listening to your story, one of the lessons that I heard that I don't think you, you paid attention to, but hopefully y'all in the in our audience, y'all caught it too. Randy learned that he didn't want to work for nobody no more. He learned that it wasn't worth it. And he and, and not only did he learn that it wasn't worth it, it became so crystal clear to him that it wasn't worth it, that he was willing to do whatever was necessary on the back end to not have to do that no more. But that getting willing to do it, that's a transformation that oftentimes happens because you were like, oh, I thought this was better, but I know it's not now. Mm -hmm. Right. And before you went and did that, you couldn't have convinced yourself. You couldn't have to. It, it, nobody else could have told you enough because it ain't like you hadn't read the books. It's not like you hadn't heard the things. You had already been an entrepreneur. I know you. You read books just voraciously. Like, I know you had read the books already. I did the same thing. There have been a number of different instances where I've gotten into things. And after I got into them, I was like, oh, confirmed that feeling that was in the back of my head that I wasn't trusting. I know now that I now know that it's true. But I couldn't have known that without this experience, right? And a, a lot of times I'll beat myself up because I'll be like, well, I should have known, I should have known. But I had to, again, my Angelou from the, from, mm -hmm. from the grave is still speaking words of wisdom. You got to give yourself grace for what you didn't know when you didn't know it. You can't, you can't say, I should have known. You didn't know because if you knew, you'd have did a different thing. Yeah. And we got to acknowledge that. those times when it's like, no, I am actually uncertain. I am actually in a place where I don't know this, where I think this, where I feel this, but I got to try it so that I can learn. And we got to stop beating ourselves up for needing that proof because the proof is what gives you the conviction. The proof is what allows you to stand steadfast now when everybody else can't see it, but you know it's there. Yeah, I think there's, um, and here's my pushback on that, right? So there's proof and then there's faith, right? There's proof. Yeah. Okay, so y'all, think about this. And if y'all watching this and y'all, you, you'll see, you know, we're, st we're still friends. We're not getting too heated <laughs> and this, you know, I'm like, you suck, you know, none of that kind of stuff. We just disagree sometimes. And, right. uh, and I think about getting the reps in that this is the reason why entrepreneurs should never go back to nine to fives because you're going to interrupt your reps. Okay, here's one of the biggest examples as I started thinking more about this. It's like when Michael Jordan mm -hmm. decided to play baseball. I love uh, this analogy. Yeah, so let's go. Mike decided to play baseball. Now he's, and I'm thinking, bro, no, that's not what you do. Exactly. And that's not, so he attempted to a thing. Yes. Wasn't great at it. Mm -hmm. Went back to the other thing. Yeah. Now I'm leading to why entrepreneurs <laughs> now, should not go back but, to nine to fives. So I'm going I'm to let you go ahead and hit the, the why. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to reveal take it yet. But this okay. Is so I want so to, we're going to take that very analogy. I love the fact that you picked that analogy, because it's perfect, because I was one of those people who was like, I can't believe you're going to baseball. I'm from baseball? Chicago. Like, this is this is my guy. Right, exactly. Now, here's what I know now as a grown person having gone through those periods of life. When Michael Jordan finished the 1992 se 1993 season, mm -hmm. when his father died and he had accomplished Everything he wanted to accomplish. He had been a two-time Olympic champion. He had been a three-time NBA champion. He had been scoring champ. He had been defensive player of the okay. year, MVP. He had won every award and done everything in basketball. He was soundly regarded as the greatest basketball player to have ever lived in 1994 when he decided to retire. He literally had nothing more to prove with basketball. He was okay. done. It didn't challenge him. It he had no passion for it. It was gone. And he was doing and he was going through a grieving period with his father. At that moment, him continuing with basketball, he would not have actually been himself. He would not have actually been Michael Jordan. 
he would not have been giving it his all. He wouldn't have been doing it. He knew that. And he's like, I ain't about to be out there looking like boo boo the fool. That's not about what's gonna, that's not what's gonna happen. So he went away to figure out who he was now that his dad was gone. It was information that he did not have in that moment. That's why he retired. Now, here's the key thing. Yes, he went and played baseball. And yes, he was not great at baseball. He was a phenomenal athlete, not a great baseball player, right? But he was a decent baseball player. Like, he was better than me. So, <laughs> but he, he went and played baseball. But here's what that, those, that year and a half of playing baseball taught him. It taught him what he loved about team sports and what he loved about sports and who he was without his father. And it taught him that at a level where he didn't have to perform at Michael Jordan level. It mm -hmm. helped him remember that at a level where he could just be instead of having to be the best. Yes. Yes. And now here's the kicker. What it allowed him to do was to come back and be Michael Jordan again and repeat again to be the only team in NBA history to three P have a break and three P right now. Of course, Boston did eight beautiful. in a row. So there's that, yeah. but right. They're the only team that three peated and three peated, right? Here's the thing. And he's soundly regarded as one of the greatest basketball, if not the greatest, he's my greatest. Some people would like to talk about LeBron. I like LeBron. He's always going to be number two to me. That's just me. Right. Yeah, but none, nonetheless, Right. Right. But he cemented his legacy. But more importantly, for him, he knew that coming back to basketball was the thing. And he went to be great. And not only was he great, they had the greatest team, arguably one of the greatest teams in NBA history, the greatest record in NBA history. They went 72 and 10 in the regular season and they darn near swept the playoffs. Yeah. This could easily be. And this, what made me think about that is that it's, there's parallels within what he did as I don't have to worry about the pressure anymore. Let's go ahead and and uh, transpose that on top of, well, going to get a job. I don't have to worry about whether the paycheck's coming. Okay. Right. While I'm figuring out this While I'm figuring some other stuff I think out, that right? so much, so much what happens is people push past the uncertainty that we experience as entrepreneurs. Yes, there needs to be faith. But sometimes, even in the midst of that faith, there's a ton of uncertainty because everything we're doing is built off of faith. Like entrepreneurs are literally creating something that does not exist. Correct. And we've got to give ourselves grace that sometimes it's hard to maintain seeing something that doesn't exist for all of that time while nobody else sees it. Yeah. It, it, and not every, uh, I'm finding, not every entrepreneur can deal with that uncertainty, right? And now mm -hmm. let's go ahead and, uh, and I want to share why, not yet. Here's, here's <laughs> what it starts leading to, right? Uncertainty, mm -hmm. as uh, Nassim Talib talked about, also makes you anti- fragile because and? you get better stronger now of course i mean if you're a pottery then you could break the pieces you know yeah, that's the whole you thing shatter and then, the and then you're out yeah. of the game and i always exactly. say that as long as you stay above ground <laughs> right you don't die uh, you don't you don't unlock become unliving then right. you can you, know you can it, it, you got a shot. Literally, yeah. you got a shot. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I, Mike, I, Michael Jordan could have made seven if he had maintained the consistency. I don't know. Right. Maybe he says, he I, needed, have never I gotten, needed the break. I need, or he could have gotten break. no more. Who knows? But That's given the, the fact that, given the fact that he was a superstar and he was on a trajectory. Now, Imagine if those other things had not happened. Dad never got killed. Da 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 da, mm -hmm. or never died. Da da da. da. All these different things, right? So then it may have been like we got eight. Yeah, Who yeah. Could have been. It could have been the because the next Boston Dynasty. Kobe yeah. got six, and he didn't five. a five, and he didn't take time to sing. So he didn't take time off, but he took time in between. Okay, there was and, time and, and, in between. 
Right. But, but here's didn't, the thing. He didn't, he didn't go play no baseball and start. I agree with you. But, 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 but hear what you just said. Kobe got five and he played 20 years straight. Mike got six and he only played 14 and he had a two year gap in between. Okay. I mean, listen, <laughs> listen. Again, it's my personal belief that yeah, yeah. the entrepreneur should never go back to the nine to five because. The person you are is not going to, I'm going to start now giving you the tips. You, the yeah, person yeah. you have become is not going to fit into that organization. I agree. Right. That's the, not the number one reason, but that's another reason. The organization mm, is not going to give you, it's it's not going to give you what you need. It's not going to give you flexibility. It's not going to give you time, blah, blah, blah. All these different things. Yeah. So yeah, you're going to be in a, in a, in a perpetual state of dissatisfaction. And you can always, in my opinion, be on the cusp of getting fired <laughs> because entrepreneurs smell different. Yeah. We're different. Yeah. You see yeah, things nah, differently and you want to, you know, personal experience, you want to leave meetings because they're not going anywhere. Right. You want to consult with everybody because you see the problems and you go, hey, can't we just do this and that? Can't we just, you know, you want to marshal in the resources when you are now a resource. Yeah. And you're going, wait a you minute. You have this, to be very this, much more diminished. You have to be diminished if you're going there. There, think here's what here's what I hear you saying. I think I agree with you. In order to go back into a 95, there's a different sac uh, to go back into a 925, there's a different sacrifice that you're making. Yes. Yeah. And that sacrifice is the sacrifice of your freedom, the sacrifice of your of of of, of full expression of yourself as an entrepreneur, and so be very. I would I would temper. I would say it in this way. I would say, beware of the cost of going back to a ninety a, a nine to five. And we can't be, look. The cost is great, and we yeah. were talking off off camera about the opportunity costs. Mm -hmm. Of doing one action over now. This is why I loved econ so much. Is that I used to think econ was about money, but it was about choices. Mm -hmm. And there's a suggestion within economics that says one choice is a cost. Mm -hmm. What is the cost, and can you a mitigate the cost and or at least factor them in? Exactly. And the cost of an entrepreneur going back to a nine to five job. Is that a again? You, you your soul starts getting sucked out. You become diminished, as Rob talked about, right? And um, there's a, a host of other factors, but the number one reason I want to jump into it. Number one reason you might like it. <laughs> you might like getting a paycheck so much. Watch this. Mm -hmm. You might like, and I, and I wrote this down, says, what, well, what's the problem? And I was asking people, you know, why they didn't, you know, why, or why they did it, why they went back to nine to five. And it's like, I had to, mm -hmm. I was like, nah, did you really? Mm -hmm. It's like, well, you know, my bills were piling up. I needed to pay my bills. I says, well, do you really? You know, I kind of kept challenging it, but then I came back with the fact that you might just start liking it you might Golden start handcuffs. getting lazy as a result of it you mm -hmm. might enjoy that paycheck so much that you're willing to trade be having your soul sucked out right <laughs> having your energy directed being told what to do that you mm -hmm. forget if you were a lion in the zoo you forget how <laughs> to hunt because guess what they're feeding you you forget how to hunt and get this, yeah, yeah. you forget how to hunt. And if you ever, and this is the, you become like uh, Talib said, you become fragile because get this, they take the job away and you forgot how to hunt. Now you can't eat at all. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't eat at all. It is because you got soft and you got lazy and you got comfortable and you got so used to it. This is the number one reason, in my opinion, why yeah. an entrepreneur should never go back to a nine to five job. Yeah. Figure it yeah, out. I, 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 I can Figure definitely see that. I think that I would 
I would, and again, that's that's that's, that's why I agree with you, sort of. Um, I think that if we are going to live in the tyranny of the or, if you are either entrepreneurial or you are comfortable in a nine to five job, that is a dangerous choice. I agree with yes. you. I and would that, that's that's the position push I'm, people I'm from. Exactly. I would push people to pursue the both and. And here's the veil that I'm hoping that we can that we can tear down in this conversation. So many people believe that the Tyler Perry's of the world, the Richard Branson's of the world, the Tony Robbins of the world, the Dean Graciosi's of the world, the Grant Cardone's of the world. Think about all the people that you think are rich. So many people believe that those people are just grinding and hustling all day. It's a fallacy. The reality is what those people do is they grind and they hustle and they secure the bag, as the young people say, right? And in doing so, they then set themselves up to have a, a floor. So now I've got investments that are taking care of my bills. I'm out of the rat race, if you would. Which allows me to then spend a year building a business. And then that business starts to make money and it then pays for the money and the time that I put into it. And then it starts adding to the bag, which now I get to live a different standard of living a year later. And then I go and spend another year building another business. And then I do two and three and four. And now Tony Robbins runs over 100 businesses. Richard Branson runs over 400 businesses. And those businesses are just constantly securing the bag and putting more into the coffers because his standard of living can't surpass what the businesses that he owns or that they own are doing. When you're at the beginning stage, which is where we're talking about, right? The, the, yeah. The yeah, I love, small I love business, the Richard Brandon, small to medium Branson business. approach. Right? Yes. This, when we're looking at small, I don't think business, he's ever worked for anybody. See? Right. And he's had, and right. And he started learning entrepreneurship with his mother when she was doing stuff. Right. And, and if you go look at his story, one of the things that you'll see is he's always figured out how to secure the next bag. But here's the thing. He started his first business when he was at boarding school. What does he, him being at boarding school tell you? He had no bills. So he had the ability to take the time and build this business. And then by the time he got out of school, that business was making him enough money that he didn't have to have a job to take care of his bills. And then, so he started another business and that's how they started Virgin. And then they started Virgin Records. Yes. I mean, Virgin, yes. um, the, the, the airport and they had a magazine, they had all, and all of those businesses got started as they had secured the bag for something else. And so because yes. he had this business over here, he went and got investors to invest in this business. So again, he secured the bag for that business, didn't have to come out of his pocket. This one's paying his bills. This one has investor money if it works great if it doesn't the investors lose their money i'm good i've lost time but i haven't lost money the thing i want everybody on there to hear is is again it's both and remember that the fallacy that we're chasing is this idea of one business securing all of your needs and taking care of everything you want if you look at robert kiyosaki and cash flow quadrant if you listen to the biographies of any of the, the the great people that we just talked about what you will hear is if you're going to be an entrepreneur you're not going to have one business that and, I, and i'm truly believing that and i think that is that momentum is hence the reason why i'm telling this um this friend of mine son don't go do that don't spend the time because it's a cost to you going out there and figuring stuff out, especially given what we have available for, from a variety of the business models. I don't care if it's drop shipping, if it's Amazon selling, there's a business model out there for you that you can literally figure out and or you can Look at the business model. Now, I have this this, this ability and, and Rob has this ability to be able to look at a business model and go, oh, OK, here's what I'm going to do. But I've got some other ideas that I can add to that that could even make it you know, supercharge. It's like getting a car and then you go, well, I got a guy that knows how to go past the governor and make it faster and do all, make it make noise and all this kind of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got drop shipping then you got maybe drop servicing and you go business model is. I go somewhere, they've got the product, I bring it in, they drop it off to me, and then I ship it out without having to do too much stuff. Well, services are like the same thing. So now you're just taking a business model, 
from one industry in one area and saying, well, let's drop servicing. Well, I'm going to go out. I'm the person that secures a service. Somebody drops me, you know, a couple of bucks. Then I go find somebody to do the thing, drop servicing. So you start thinking there's so many business models that if you just take the time to get the reps in, and I use that pitching analogy, you see so many picture pitchers that you go, oh, they just threw a fastball and you know how to adjust. They threw a knuckleball. I get it. Oh, that oh, their fastball is better, but I got it because I've seen it so many times. Versus, mm -hmm. yeah, I think I'm going to play softball for a while. It's kind of the same, but not really. Right. And then yeah. I think if you just stay in a momentous way and not break up that time by going back and trying to, after you've been entrepreneurial, it's a disaster waiting to happen. It's <laughs> unsatisfaction waiting to happen. And that's the number one reason why you should not, as an entrepreneur, go get a nine to five job because you just might like it and you just get lazy and then you become. Yeah. mediocre anymore. so let us know Listen. in the comments what you think you agree with randy you agree with me the both and or the zero the total focus model which one do you think you need to be um let us hear in the comments which one or do you think both of us are wrong you think there's another way we love to hear from you in the comments let us know what you That's think it. about the two business guys mastermind all right y'all we'll see you in the next video